Well, hello, my little beauties. It's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire from dcradionetwork.com and insiderclub.org. Today, I'm asking the question, have frameworks made you a weak web developer? Well, today, we're going to find out. Well, maybe not today, but over these next couple of videos, we're going to find out because I have decided to give you folks a little practical challenge, a technical challenge, you know, technical. We spend a lot of time on this channel talking about um, different philosophies and concepts and ideas and ranting and everything, but I think it's time we had a little journey into the technical. So here's the vibe, right? Have you ever been on one of those, uh, maybe a car insurance website, for example, and it makes you choose a make and then a model uh, and then maybe a, something else, I don't know, and then you hit submit and suddenly it shows you all of the cars that have that makes and model and when you click in, you've got every statistic known to humanity, right? The speed and the emissions and uh, the acceleration, engine size, you name it, right? Have you ever visited one of those websites? Well, you probably have, right? And have you ever wondered how those websites are made? Well, today I'm going to show you. In the UK, at least, there is one company, a company by the name of CAP, and they have a monopoly on car data, right? Um, they've had competition from one or two other companies, but to be honest, their competition is, is weak. And so, if you want a website, let's say a car insurance website or something like that, with really accurate data about all of the cars, then what would happen is you would go to CAP, right? And you would pay them, well, it changes, but the last I checked, it's not far off, equivalent of about $1,000 a month. And for that, they will give you basically a bunch of CSV files and they'll say, go figure it out. That's it, okay? Now, um, I, I don't have anything uh, against CAP and a, a friendly bunch and everything, and I've, I've worked with them since 2004 in various sites. I've maybe built, I think, 12 sites for the motor trade, and they're an okay bunch, but because they have a monopoly, they really don't have any obligation or need to offer technical support. And so if you call CAP with a technical support question, then most of the time the answer will be, go figure it out, okay? And I'm, I'm not being disrespectful to CAP or anything, it's just the way it is, you know? Um, you can figure it out. And again, I'm not, um, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but if you're in a position where you're being hired to build sites like that, you probably don't need technical support. And I hope you will forgive me for saying that, but it's just the way it is. So the point is, when you're playing the web development game at a certain level, you cannot go to Stack Overflow. You cannot go to some IRC chat room. You cannot go to the documentation or anything. You have to figure out how to solve problems on your own. And today, I'm gonna to expose you to one of those problems because I'm very interested to see how many of you people can solve this. So, let me give you the problem. And by the way, you don't need to write code. You can uh, type in a couple of sentences and just say what you would do. You can uh, just think of an answer. You can play around with code. You can contact me privately or anything. You can even just think in your mind. What would you do? How would you solve this? So are you ready? Let's have a look. All right, kids, here's a little website that I'm finishing off for a client. It's unfinished, has not seen the light of day, and I'm deliberately hiding the logo, right? But I'm going to give you a little challenge, and let me just set the scene. This is a car leasing website, and I can choose a make, let's say BMW. I can choose a model, like a 3 Series, and then 
I can choose a vehicle type such as, let's say, a saloon. And then I can say, find the best deals now, okay? Now look at how fast that loaded, by the way. I'm very chuffed with that, I have to tell you. Anyway, um, I can filter by transmission. So let's look at all of the manuals. Here we go, ones with a manual gearbox, here they are. We can filter by number of doors. Uh, we can filter by things like uh, fuel type. Let's look at all of the petrol ones. Here we go. And we can filter by this thing called trim. Now on some websites, you'll see this being called spec or some other word or phrase, but here I'm calling it trim, okay? And if I click on that, you'll see all of the different types. So we have a, a sport, an SE, an M sport and so on. And we can do that and it remembers the previous selections. You'll notice that it's also very, very fast, right? Um, and we can do this for any make and model, actually. We can do uh, something like an Audi, uh, an A4, let's say, and we can have a look at the saloons. Here they all are. And uh, again, it was never even had time for the spinner. I mean, I'm so chuffed with that. But same again, you know, look at the different transmissions, uh, look at the number of doors, well they're all four here. Uh, we can look at the fuel types, let's look at the diesel ones, and we can look at this thing called trim. So let's look at the S-line ones, and here they are. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, so now you've had a look at what we are trying to build here. This is the challenge, right? And um, by the way, you, you don't need to worry about writing code or anything. Uh, just even think about how you would solve this and that's enough. If you want to jot a couple of sentences down, that's cool as well, okay? But I'm just interested uh, interested to know how you would build this. Now, let me show you the resources that you would get if you were hired to do a job like that, okay? So, I have Navicat open here and I have a bunch of tables that are provided from CAP. Now, actually, they're not tables that you get from CAP. They just give you a bunch of CSV files and, at the moment, a SOAP API. Anybody remember that? There's not much use. So, uh, basically, you just get a bunch of CSV files and you have to make the tables. But I've gotten and made the tables and here they are, okay? And you're on your own, you know? Stack Overflow is not going to help you here. Um, but let me just see if I can get you out of the starting blocks. We've got one called cap make, right? Now that's quite a simple table. It's got about 52 rows. Starts from Alfa Romeo, I think, and ends at Volvo. Um, and it's just all of the car makes, right? Now when you select a make, it's choosing from the car make table, okay? Now the next one, where you choose a model, let's say you choose BMW and then 3 Series. Well, it turns out that 3 Series is not a model. You'd think it would be this, right? but it's not. 3 Series is actually a range, believe it or not. Uh, so it's make, range, then model. This is the way it works, right? So it's make, range, then model, then derivative. That's how cars are categorized, okay? All cars. Um, so when you choose a make, the make ID would link to the cap range thing like so, something like that. And I'm going to let you figure out the rest. Now, I want to just say, do you remember the trim thing that we had earlier on where it was showing you SE and all of that stuff? Well, on cap, they call that one short derivative description. So that's short DER description and here it is here. Okay, that's where you'll find that. This rate book table is where all of the prices live and you should see one that says basic rental and that's the basic monthly rental. That's where you get that from, okay? So, that's what you've got, folks. Some of these tables are small, such as fuel types or something, uh, you know, or makes quite small, but some of these tables have tens of thousands of rows and in fact, I think there's a few tables on CAP that have got over half a million rows. There might even be a, f a few that go over the million mark. So some of these tables are gonna be very big, some very small. That's all I'm gonna give you folks. And I'm just gonna ask, how would you build it? You can 
jot down anything, you can ask for clarification. If you want me to do a select statement, if you want me to tell you, for example, how many rows are on a particular table, if there's anything you need to know, just ask. I'm going to leave this one up for one week and I'm going to see how many people can figure out how to build the thing that I just showed you. And remember, folks, speed is of the essence. You'll notice that we had nice fast page loads and that is very, very important. So keep speed in mind. Also keep in mind the fact that we have some massive database tables, really, really big tables. So I'm asking, how would you build that? Thank you very much. And I'll do a follow up video next week. So just before we finish up and once again, I'll give you a quick look at this give you a chance to check it out. Um, let me just shuffle these around. It would be like that. Let me see if I can help you a little bit here. Uh, make ID would go to... I haven't got a clue. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Range ID, pardon me. Range ID would go to range code. So wherever that says code, Sometimes it's not really a code, it's just an ID, it's an integer, you know? So make, range, model, okay? Can you handle this? Um, and I think that's enough, okay? So have a look at that, and I'm just wondering how you would build the things. Are there any tables you'd like to see? Well, we do a few select statements. How about if we do a select on cap DER, right? Let's do that just show you how it looks. Select all from cap D E R. And by the way, those names are the names that are suggested on one of the files hidden in the depths of the cap website. I mean, you have to kind of figure that out. Here's what cap D E R looks like in case anyone's curious. Okay. Exciting stuff, right people? What do you reckon? That's what the cap codes look like. Every car has a cap code and a cap ID. Okay, the cap ID is a number. And the cap code's a big kind of alphanumeric string, about maybe 13 digits or something. So that's what you're working with. Anything else you want to see, folks? Would you like to see a query from cap code desk? Well, I'll show you what that looks like. Let me do that. Here we go. And here, here's cap code desk. So this one has a, I think it's got about 79,000. Yeah, there we go, 79,000 rows basically. And that's what it looks like. That's what you get for your thousand dollars a month, folks. Okay, that's it. So, how would you go about building it? I don't expect people to write code or anything. I know there's not enough information. Would you like to see what rate book looks like? I'll be glad to show you. Here we go. Let's have a look. Okay. And I'm just interested to know the general strategy that you folks would use. So rate book. I think this is quite a big table. It's taken a long time. Um, man, it's a really a long time. I think this one has probably got about three quarters of a million rows in it, but I'm not sure. We'll just see. Because it's, remember, it's quotations for every make and model and every variation, every term, mileage, initial payment, you name it. And it's all on this table called Ratebook. And it's probably just broken the server. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad I showed you that. Because it has. It's just broken the server. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Let's stop the query. Oh, well, there you go. It just showed just as I stopped. Um, all right. So that one's got just under half a million rows. But I think it might be more than that, actually, if I'd kept it running. But there's what rate book looks like. Have a look. See that? There you go. It's all there. All right. So now you know the kind of stuff that you have to work with out there 
in the real world, you know? Let's do all from rate book where model like, let's do something like three series. Let's do that and uh, we'll just run that just so you guys can get an idea. And again, look how long that's taking. That produced 17,640 results and there's what you get, okay? So again, I'm not expecting any code or anything. I'm not expecting any SQL statements. Generally, I'm just curious to know how you would build the thing that I showed you. Would you use table joins? Maybe you'd do a fancy table join. Would you build some kind of API? Would you um, maybe download the data and make a single table that combines some of the tables? I don't know. You tell me. I'm really curious and I'll catch you later on.